And joining me on the podcast and live on video, looking like the man from Milk Tray, it's Alan Green, CEO of Brand Communications, in his black roll neck. If you're not watching this on video, check it out on video. Look at very sharp, matching hair, matching glasses. Doesn't mess around now. You know, Al? Matching, matching headset too. Uh, um, yeah, black yeah. headset. Yeah, yeah. Just, it's really You should good. have a wireless, Al. What's going on there? Wireless is the thing now. Yeah, I see, I'm walking the dog sometimes. I see these people with massive headphones on, their wires plugged in. I think, just get some small buds. It's easy, isn't it? Is yeah, but, I see some old guys who have huge headphones. I, think. Yeah, I can't have them smile when I see that. But you see, I'm I'm Dom, Dom Jolly era. Do you remember Dom Jolly? Oh, yeah, his, yeah. His massive yeah. mobile phone. Hello! You know, yeah. that's that. That's my era, you see. So I, I prefer, yeah, you know, stuff like this I can plug in, you know, it goes in. Whereas... Yeah. Whereas remote stuff, I, I've, I, in fact, an old colleague who knows who he is, and I shan't mention his name, um, also has a similar system to you. And mm. the thing is, he it never connects properly, so you can be talking to him. And, you know, on average, every phone call we make, uh, or call we make, I'm spending probably about 10% of that call waiting for his system to actually connect up. Yeah, yeah, that's annoying. I know. Well, that's a, that's a, his lack of technical know-how. I mean, I generally, I do have the odd glitch that doesn't connect, but it's normally good to go. Uh, by, by the way, a uh, big weekend of sport. Let's not mention the rugby, but you can take some uh, solace there uh, because, of course, Spurs got hammered 3 0. I don't know what happened there. I said, my son, obviously, a big Spurs fan, didn't mention the Spurs game. I don't really keep up with it, but um, when they win, I know about it. Uh, but when they lose, <laughs> yes. it doesn't say a thing, you know. It's like, yeah. I said, just it popped up on my phone. I said, Monty, I was like, what happened to Spurs? Oh, mumble, more off that's what it really it, it's remarkable isn't it we, we really looked like we'd hit a vein of form last weekend against aston villa we smashed villa 4-0 you know and were eat, we played them off the park really and you know there was a sense then great this team's really coming together mickey van der ven got injured and then we go to fulham where historically recently we've done quite well the last time we lost to fulham to these margins was i think back in 1983 so a long time ago, but they smashed us 3-0 and the team didn't turn up. You know, we we were just off it everywhere. Um, and, you know, we have a long way to go. We have an awful yeah. long way to go. So, yeah, what can I say, Monty? Well, I suppose with progress like that, it is, it, it is a couple of steps forward, one step back, isn't it? That's, it is. That's, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, same with rug, uh, rugby in Wales. I mean, they, they did stick in five steps back, I think. But uh, there's a, the but, excuse is it's a young team, so we, yeah, hopefully they yeah, got mature a bit. You know? But the last, the last few minutes of that game, I mean, particularly when when the uh, when, when, when your scrum half kicked the ball forward um, and scored that last straight try. Of course, it could have bounced left or right, but it bounced straight up into his arms. He didn't yeah. need to break stride, and he buried that try. So. You know, Wales have got Wales are going to be great. They're, they're a young side. They're going to really come good in the next year or so. So uh, I like your positivity, Al. Do you know, half time I went to Asda. I said, "Oh, sorry, I'm going to, I said, Eve, my, my wife was going to go." I said, "I'll go." I said, "I can't watch this anymore." And literally, my mate was texting me. They're coming back. I thought, oh, this is going to be another Scotland Wales where Scotland yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, nil uh, at no point to the board Wales in half time. They came back to, with one point of uh, winning it. But it um, anyway, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Al, what, do you know what I always remember? You, you highlighting the reason why I, I, I see. You know, I think the first of a podcast with you, but um, you know, and you got lots of ideas, stock ideas there. And I always remember you talking about war paint London. I said, oh, okay. And we mm. had a few jokes about it being, you know, uh, I said, you know, makeup getting popular now with all these uh, was it, drag queen shows and all that stuff. There must be double yeah, the market size yeah, now for them, yeah. double the opportunity. But uh, it's done incredibly well. You know, in fact, I'll sh I'll, let's have a chart. Of, well, I'll share the chart of you, War Paint London. And um, be, uh, look at this. And I think you were talking about it down here, literally uh, yeah, you know, yeah. a couple of quid. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah. it's now. Or is it? It's now. If you fork me, it's moved my head from the screen. It's yeah, more than double than the last year. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, and is um, it, it, it one? Yep. Yeah, uh, this time last year was two pounds a share. Today's four pound twenty nine a share, or um, four pound twenty three a share, and uh, with very good reason. With very good. Yeah, reason. yeah. And I, I, I want to, uh, and I. Al, if you can find any more of these, right? Mm. This is what I want. This is almost like you know, it was sub hundred million market cap. You know, it was growing top line, and of course, I keep saying this. It, it, you know, if you're looking at small companies, you want them to grow. So it's essential they are growing top line. Uh, and that's what it was doing. And look at that. It just, uh, it, it had a dip back, by, by the way, back in 2021, came from mm -hmm. 239 down to a quid. And they said, wow. And then it broke up again and it hasn't stopped since. But uh, it's still looking powerful. So you can find another one of those, Al, right? Uh, even, even, even one a month or something, if you can, possible. It's not easy because it's exceptional business. If you can find one of those, that'd be perfect. But uh, I don't know, what's your thoughts on Warpaint now? Any, any, any thoughts? 
it's it's a niche business. I mean, that they have just literally put out um, a, a, a a trading update, and uh, the trading update once again they're going to uh, the the performance to the year ending thirty first December twenty three now expected to be ahead of market uh, expectations. Um, they expected eighty five million pounds worth of sales. They now reckon they're going to do nearly ninety million pounds worth of sales. The margins remain robust exceeding margins in 2022 um, and profit before tax of not less than 18 million, which is, uh, you know, well over doubles last year, 7.7 million last year. So so that even though the group have grown that strongly, they continue to grow and they continue to deliver. And they're doing, doing so because they are in a niche market. They're able to um, generate economies of scale. You know, if, if we go back to a couple of years ago, the uh, that the, they acquired... A couple of brands which have enabled them to uh, to white label and to to manufacture the manufacture their own stuff and also ramp up the distribution network at the same time. So mm. their their manufacturing manufacturing costs are, are low. They can they manuf they can manufacture in scale and because of that they're able to really focus on the distribution network and accelerate sales. And that's precisely yeah. what we're seeing now. I mean, you know. They've they've increased uh, they've increased sales, beaten expectations for last year. So I wouldn't bet against them doing the same again in quarter one this year. It'll get to a stage where the market becomes saturated and that curve will start to level out. But for now, this is just one huge growth company. And of course, it, you know that they're operating in a in a niche area where they absolutely know what the costs are and they've got control of the costs. But they've got a manufacturing network in place that enables them to continue to to scale up and to maintain margins. Yeah, well, in fact, it, the margin there, the, 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 you know, it's almost twin turbo engines of growth here is when you're not mm. only growing top line, but your margins improve. You know, yeah. because and they did that here. Yeah, look at that, twenty eight percent revenue, but the margins gone from thirty three point eight gross margin to thirty six point four. Yeah, and uh, yeah. like I said profitable tax at 106 percent so looking very good and, and they're just in the UK this expanding someone's I, I, someone contacted me saying I I question the value now here a little bit um but uh, someone said they are, are they heading to America a little bit sometimes that can be a little bit hard work but um yeah in fact look at this what else so this is um yeah, this is their results last year so all look at the growth there so I, I I look at different metrics on it, but the yeah. questionable thing here is value a little bit because their PE this historical figure of course last year's was, but their PE is a little bit high and everything. But um, so they need to ramp up again. But um, yeah, but you know all decent stuff. Momentum's good. Uh, I think in fact they broke the target. I think now where's the broken target? Let's have a look, look at the broken target for a second. Uh, sorry, forecast. Oh, it's not there. They haven't got a forecast in there. It's unusual. But yeah, yeah. Um, it'd be interesting to see if they can expand elsewhere because I suppose they need that now because it's rallied strongly. What I'm saying, Al. I'm not, I'm not saying that's a good pick now because valuation maybe is a little bit stretched. But uh, if you can find companies like that, Al, early on, okay, yeah. that's what I'm yeah. after. Well, it, it's either going to be companies in niche industries, uh, you know, that, uh, I mean, okay, it's cosmetics, a niche industry, perhaps not, but I think the way Warpaint have approached it, they turned it into something of a niche industry. Um, but they, the, 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 their acquisitions, what they did well in the in their early stage of growth, they they made a couple of really good acquisitions, which enabled them to scale the business mm. and keep manufacturing costs to a minimum. Now um, you get to a point where you'll probably outgrow those manufacturing facilities. Can you then go on and replicate on a larger scale? Um, and of course, if you're operating globally. Then you've got to go and speak to other manufacturers. Can you maintain quality control um, and after sales and everything that goes with that? And that those are where the challenges lie. But uh, I think, given what they've done to date, um, you know, you look at what they've delivered for investors. You know, if you're if you were in at eighty p, you'd be delighted, wouldn't you? And I think you'd be back in the company. You'd, you'd have taken some money off the table, but you'd still be back in this company to to de deliver further growth. Um, and if for any reason there is a pullback. Um, because also what we see is when when companies do perform so strongly like this, if they do disappoint or if one of the metrics is slightly off, there are, you, you'll often see a disproportionate pullback, and that could well create uh, an opportunity to get back in and you know see that value return fa fairly uh, fairly near term. Yeah, just looking at the chart here, this, this 2000 really dipped down. You had uh, COVID stuff going on and a fallout from that. 
Yep. But uh, you see this level here, where it's sort of struggling above one forty, and then this is two day moving average in the red for people watching mm -hmm. on video, and it sort of broke that, came back down, then it nice and strong day broke that, and then broke previous one forty level, and then it had a little bit of a pullback, but then rallied again. So that level there, one forty, yep. was almost resistance that they broke, and since then really? it hasn't really yeah. looked back. Look at that. It's not even gone anywhere near the 200 day moving average. It's, it's bounced off the 50 day moving average nicely and yeah. it hasn't looked back. But um, yeah, and so I think, uh, yeah. and also, you know, if you, if you relate that to performance terms, that of course relates to 2023 and they've, the market, the market expected a return of um, 85 million uh, turnover and they've actually delivered. 89.5 million so nearly 90 mm. million so, so that's a that's a big uplift you know so if they can keep on doing that then you know these uh, i think i think the 200 day uh, i mean you look where it is now it's, it's looking fantastic isn't it that chart it really is yeah uh okay uh what, what, you got, what else you got al what else you don't want okay so last year uh last december in fact i took a trip to um anglesey in wales um on your motorbike <laughs> no, actually. Uh, uh, although, although um, I, I I I do tour around Wales fairly regularly on the motorbike, yeah. as followers on social media of mine will know. Um, but this is this was to see a company called Anglesey Mining, um, uh, Epigode AYM. Uh, but more specifically, the uh, we were we went to look at the Paris Mountain project, um, where the where the uh, there exists a, a, an old mine there um, and an old mine shaft um, and an area that can only be described as a lunar landscape. Um, it was formerly an open pit mine and there are all sorts of oxides on the surface that run off into a tailing pond. A um, lot of history there. You've got it. And uh, and and this big, this tower here, you see, if you come back from there, there's a lunar landscape. It was used, been, it's been used for various film sets uh, such as Mortal Kombat um, and others. There's the old mine shaft there. You can see the old the old the, the shaft there. It's a beautiful area. Now the locals love this mine. That they're, they're they're fully supported because it's been there for years. So although it's a brownfield site, the locals love it. Um, and the tailing ponds used to drain off into the bay, and the bay was so toxic that all the old sailing boats used to come in, moor there for two weeks, and. Uh, the water in the bay used to clear all the barnacles off the bottom of the boat, so oh. they could then sail on and and add a few uh, a few knots to their top speed. Um, but uh, what you've got here is a, a, a polymetallic mine. But um, the team there uh, under Joe Battersill, who's who is is a non-exec director, that they're going to be appointing a new chief executive and probably uh, um, uh, further board members uh, in the coming months. But uh, what you've seen uh, or what we've seen there is a drilling campaign that is going to deliver a significant upgrade to the existing PFS or pre-feasibility study. Um, they've identified uh, a geographic anomaly under the ground that goes, uh, goes into an area called the Northern Copper Zone. And the grades they've been putting out, I was in the core shed, um, were just chock full of mineralization and copper. And they've identified a zone that... Um, was initially thought to be some 50 meters thick but it's up to 100 meters thick um and it could extend as far as a kilometer underground so that's that's huge so what is, that will deliver is a significant upgrade to the pfs that was done previously back uh, back back in the day um that uh, the the company's got a few more holes to drill um it will probably have to come back to the market to raise money to fund the drilling of those holes but um, the, the there are permits uh, that uh, will be issued um, to uh, continue with the mine and, and the work. But those permits, in the sense, are they've been described as similar to uh, if you have, uh, say, permission to build an extension on your house, and that permission lapses, you can go back to council, pay a fee, and renew. And it's the same with the permits. The, the locals are also fully, uh, fully supportive um, and there's the prospect that uh, with copper uh, or, or with the amount of copper they've identified in the uh, in the core that's come up from the holes that they've drilled so far, um, we could be seeing uh, if copper comes back onto the UK critical minerals list, which it should be, and it should have been in the first place, then there uh, there's the possibility of grants uh, such as the UK Infrastructure Bank that provided a £25 million grant to Cornish Lithium 
we could be looking at those sort that sort of money coming in and that that sort of money will start to rejuvenate the local area create more employment and so on the the, the other added bonus is that the mine is uh, is about 20 miles from hollyhead port and there is a jetty there that's already been identified that could be used to take the ore out so the the road route's already been approved so the, the ore can be taken from the port it can be shipped out um, and uh, shipped to market from there the company also has a, uh, a 49 percent stake in the Grangersberg iron ore project uh, in Sweden and that uh, that um, the, the, the Granges pro uh, project has a net present value of 688 million dollars they've got a first round of refusal to go to 52.5 percent um, and they also have a stake in the Labrador iron ore mines uh, in in Quebec in Canada uh, a 12 percent stake but the focus is on Paris Mountain um, and bringing this uh, this project back to life. And um, we're going to see, uh, I think, a transformational year for the company. Um, and I mean, we're seeing, you know, looking at this chart here, you know, we're seeing uh, we're seeing the 50 days punch through the uh, 200 day. But um, are we going to uh, see this return? And my my guess is, yes, we are. We're going to be back over TP before too long. Yeah, it seems like maybe that's what well, we can't tell yet because obviously it's all about uh, with you know ex exploration companies. Like I said, when you're looking at a loss making company, you've got to think uh, first of all how much cash they got, how long will it last, and that's the most important thing about loss making companies. But um, yeah, it's, it seems to bounce off the low there. By the way, if you're watching, you know, listening on podcast, I just looked at their website. Some cracking drone footage of uh, over Anglesey there, isn't it? Yeah, it's so it, it's a beautiful place. Video. It, yeah, it really is quite stunning. And I mean, I, I was very privileged to go up there, but uh, but also looking in the core sheds too and speaking to the drill team. There's a the, the team on site are hugely enthusiastic, and uh, it's a really exciting project. But also, it, you know, it does uh, for some reason. If you go to the US, uh, the EU, Australia, copper is a critical mineral for all of those. For all of those jurisdictions for some reason the uk have not included copper on the critical minerals list and when you consider in an electric vehicle um in an internal combustion engine you've got an average of 23 kilograms of copper in an internal combustion engine car in an ev it's 85 percent so yeah. you know well the uk go wrong haven't they i mean it's, it's obviously, yeah, yeah. yeah behind the curve here on this one because it's obviously you know more copper is needed and going forward even more copper be needed but um, yeah, so I think they've, they're, they're behind the curve there on that one. But there we go. You know, you, what you say, you've got a government there. It's, it's at the moment, it, it, all over the place, aren't they? You got, I mean, ministers, you know, jumping into office and out of office every five, 10 minutes. There's no yeah. continuity at all. And so, um, yeah, I don't know. Well, I think, Maybe after the next election, it'll settle down a bit. And who knows? Yeah, I think we've got to get this, this election away. And I think if the Tories stand a chance of winning, they've got to bring Port Penny Morden in and. Put her in charge because uh, she's... oh, but her politics there from do you like Penny yeah, Morton, yeah. Al? Do you? you wouldn't mind oh, having yeah. her in the coal shed. <laughs> 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 oh. yeah, yeah, thinking man's crumpet. I think was it? No, no, you can't, you can't say that. Come on, goodness me, no, 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 you, you can't say that. No, no, better write it back. But then, she, she failed against her. she last, last time, didn't she? I mean, um, you well, know, she I did. Think she she did, but, but, but but I think she's you know she's she's uh, got a tremendous amount of gravitas and. You know, a potential great female leader in the in the making there, but I think the Tories are so far behind the curve. It'll be a miracle if the, they beat Keir, interesting Starmer to number ten. Yeah, I think the only way uh, Tories gonna win is uh, if Thatcher comes back from the dead, the dead and uh, says, "All right, I'm standing again." But that's not happened. Yeah, well, I don't think it's going. You know, perhaps Penny Morton is uh, is Thatcher's daughter. You know, the, the Iron yeah. Lady Mark II. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, what's, what's, what's next? What's last? What's last? Last, last pick here. Okay, last pick. So uh, we're on on the cannabis now, uh, just so uh, so you know, let, sit sit back and relax. Um, so this is uh, Voyager Life. Um, it, this is an aqueous listed company. So Voyager oh, Life. I've got that in chart. Right. Uh, Epic code V O Y. Um, now this was this company was founded uh, initially by Nick Tullock, who is the chief executive uh, in two thousand and twenty, and. Um, Nick uh, is also chief executive or MD at ECR Minerals. Um, with with and, with, the, with the link there then, gold and, uh, and, and, and grass. Grass, golden grass. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm into gold. What's your hobbies? Gold and grass. Gold and grass, <laughs> and not necessarily in that order. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so so Voyager Life uh, are a it's a brand for premium CBD and hemp products, and they have a range. 
of products for CBD products for skin care, for 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 um, for pet care, um, and a whole raft of stuff. They've made uh, a series of acquisitions over the years. And Nick Tulloch is a very shrewd operator. He's very careful uh, in spending company money. Um, and they've made a series of acquisitions, skincare acquisitions, um, uh, and uh, and white label skincare products. They have a manufacturing facility up in Perth, in Scotland. Um, and as of now, they also have a new manufacturing facility in Jersey, thanks to a merger that was completed um, early this week with Northern Leaf PLC. Um, now, this enlarged group will be uh, worth some £5 million based on the current share price of Voyager, which is trading at 11 pence. And that gives Voyager a market cap of just £1.5 million. So there's no premium uh, in the company at all. But um, based on... It's also based on uh, well, the the the, uh, the performance package, uh, which through which they will acquire the company is based on Northern Leaf achieving revenues of five million pounds by the uh, March twenty fifth uh, or uh, March in twenty twenty five, um, and when they when when the companies come together, it'll be the first vertically integrated cannabis company in the UK, as I say, with manufacturing facilities in uh, Scotland um, and in Jersey. And um, it's been a, a year of acquisitions already for Nick, uh, for Nick and the team. They acquired Amphora Health, a CBD product company, um, a share-based deal at 12p back in January this year. So Nick is being very careful and he's putting the pieces of the jigsaw together um, and, and putting together a company that uh, really... Um, you know, if you look at it's quite a good analogy, actually, with war paint, just, you know, we spoke about war paint, just building a business, good acquisitions at the right time, you know, able to build a business, start generating revenues, keep control of fixed costs, generate economies of scale from that. And that is ex that is exactly what Voyager Life will be doing. It's got the manufacturing facility, the the uh, agreed acquisition deal with Northern Leaf will take place. Uh, you know, provided Northern Leaf hits those revenue targets of five million, so the companies will come together um, and they will manufacture. They will control probably a significant percentage of all the CBD and hemp products sold in the UK and in Europe. And uh, you know, that's going to be that. That's that could well be a company to watch for the future. It could well provide a similar performance, albeit on a smaller scale to start with than uh, the um, than the more paint. So, watch this space. Yeah, I think you can't compare the war pink yet. Well, let me ask you about CBD. Have you ever tried CBD? I haven't, no. But um, mm. I know people who have, and I know people that swear by CBD products and uh, and, and love it. So Yeah, yeah. well, it obviously there are some people. I have no effect on me as well, so I've tried a little bits and pieces. But mm. well, there's a lot of this about them. What's, what, you know, what differentiates these guys from, because it's, it's, it's the market now, you can get CBD anything, toothpaste, a lot, toilet paper, whatever you want, it's there. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. You know, what's, what's, what differentiates this, this company from others? Well, I think what differentiates th this company is is the process they've taken to get there. Because as you say, there are so many products. So uh, Voyager, realizing this, they have, um, because each of these companies that manufacture, they, they turn over a small amount of money. You know, they're, they're, it's, they're, they're not big cash businesses, but, you know, they've got steady turnover. So what Nick and the team have done, they've made those acquisitions and they put those companies together. So when you walk into a shop and see an array of CBD products, a significant percentage of the products on the shelf will belong to Voyager Life. So if you're comparing two products, you might well be comparing two products from Voyager Life. So whichever one you buy, it goes into their pot. And, and that's the secret. I think it's a, it's a it's probably a fairly fragmented market. And this is something that Voyager are addressing by really pulling all of the key, uh, all of the key operators together, putting them under one roof. And then, you know, you've got the economies of scale that go with that. And of course, you know, if there is a, a big surge in CBD uh, uh, awareness and, um, and, and products being sold, then, of course, Voyager is in pole position to take full advantage of that. Are they, are they generating revenue yet? They are. Yes, indeed. Oh. Their, uh, their revenues. So, they, uh, if, so if we look at the half year in October 23, they generated um, uh, 165,000. Uh, in turnover, um, they have five hundred and fifty-one thousand pounds cash at the bank. 
So it's a you know it's a good cash business. You know they're they're covering their costs. They're you know they're covering all the fixed costs, covering the cost of the manufacturing facility, um, and of course they're you know th through this deal they'll have two manufacturing facilities, so they can th they can scale up what they're doing without having to take on any extra space, any extra overheads to do that, and that's mm. that's key. And uh, and really that's what Warpaint did with their company. You know they they. Through making the I love what you're trying to do here, Al. Link up with more paint. I love that. I love it. I know what you're doing here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but just from little acorns. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, by the way, you mentioned Aquis. That's another stock you talked about a little bit. I wouldn't mind uh, yeah. you know revisiting that company next week or the week after, sure. whatever, because yeah, I, yeah. I, it's quite quite interesting space. It just not just the, the, the own, it's almost like the old thing about owning the picks and shovels. You know, there's companies on Aquis. But is that if you go back to sort of London Stock Exchange Group, you know, when you look at previous successful companies, you think, yeah. okay, what model have they got? And you've got Aquis, of course, smaller, but they own a, a lot of data there and they supply around the world. So it's very interesting, Aquis, actually. And it's got a very high rating. I mean, some of the broker targets are quite very high on that. Uh, and so the valuation is not good. But I mean, yeah, the valuation is almost questionable. But they are growing and they are in an interesting space. So uh, maybe and again, at Aquis, yeah. And again, your point about owning the picks and shovels, you know, it's yeah. a catch cow. You know, every transaction that takes place on that exchange, they take a sliver. And that's a great business model. And, you know, Voyager Life doing it, Warpaint are doing it. Um, and it, it, I, I'm, yeah, when we talk about um, Aquas Exchange next week, I'm going to draw a parallel with another company there in the area of tokenization. But um, that's okay. that's for them. You know, we won't discuss that now. But uh, they're in a similar, Marvel, state, so similar cool. opportunity. Who's uh, who's Tottenham playing next? Any do you know? I I haven't looked. I'll, I'll I, 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 I was so I was so disappointed over the weekend. I had to drown my sorrows afterwards. Thankfully, we went out for a meal with some friends, and uh, all was good because yeah, I, I, that's, I that's all right. Miss, Miss, and, um, Mrs G Mrs G drove home, so uh, I was, yeah, there we are. Yeah. Um. Okay. Here we go. Uh. Share screen there. You got. Uh, where are we? Luton uh, Town. Yeah, Luton Town on Saturday. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's, it's March. Oh, I mean, is that where, uh, where we are. Is it 30, what's the date then? Is that thirtieth of March on Saturday? No, it can't be. Can no, it? no, it can't be. Hang on. It's the eighteenth of March. So yeah, that's the next one. So we're not playing this weekend. Oh, okay, all right then. Yeah, okay. All right, yeah. for a rest. Yeah. Okay. Uh, marvelous stuff. All right, well, cheers, for that fella, and uh, speak you next week. Thanks, Josh. Speak you next week.